Bato ko shiri di di te Ele di ata kalada da bata ka shiri di ata Ele di di anna na nobo shiri di te Ele di ata kalada na mano moro nobo shara da ta Ele di di anna na moro nobo toko shiri di te Ele di ata kalada na mano nobo shaba ta Ele di 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 da da bo shiri di te Ele di anna na na mano nobo shara da ta Ele di di anna na na moro nobo shiri ata kalada nobo shiri ata Ele di 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 da bo shaba da da bata ka shiri di te Ele di ata kalada na mano moro Moro nobo shiri ata kala da da baza ka shiri di te ele di di anda da da baza moro nobo shiri di di anda da da baza moro nobo shara ele di di anda da da moro nobo toko la da da baza ele di 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 anda da da moro nobo toko le di di ata kala da da baza ele di 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 anda da da moro nobo shiri ata kala da da baza moro nobo shiri ata kala da da baza ka ele di 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 anda da da moro nobo shiri ele di ata kala da da baza ka shiri di ata ele di di anda da da moro nobo shiri di ata kala da da ele di Ata kalada na woto ko shiri di ata kile di 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 te ele di nobo shara na ba ata ka shiri di ata ka ele di ata kalada na moro nobo shiri ata na na moro nobo shiri di te ele di ata kalada na ba ata ka shiri di ana na na moro nobo shara na ele di 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 ana na na woto ko shiri di ata ele di ata kalada na ba ata ka shiri di 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 na na nobo shiri di ata ele di 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 nobo shiri di ata kalada na ba na moro nobo shiri ata kalada na ba ata ka shaba. Hallelujah. And Father, we believe and we receive everything that has been prayed in the spirit according to the will of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this night, and we ask that you would uh, just anoint our ears and our hearts and our minds to comprehend your word. Give us clarity and give us understanding, Father. We thank you right now that your word shall flow freely, Father, unhindered, un un unchecked by any force, and we thank you that your people shall receive with gladness and that they shall gain understanding, Father. All distractions abound, Father. We are focused, zeroed in on your voice. You said, my sheep hear my voice, and we shall hear your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Psalms 23, we're continuing in this series, um, a detailed study of the 23rd Psalm. We, we started off, uh, I think, week one. Uh, we got through verse number one. And, um, of course, uh, last um, Wednesday, due to weather concerns, we were not here. So we're going to kind of uh, kind of cram a little bit here. So we're going to be taking a look tonight at verses 2, 3, and we're going to try to get through 4. It's a lot. So verses 2, 3, and 4 tonight, I think we can get through it. But um, let's, let's start with just kind of a recap. We, we established last time that the word, uh, verse 1, the word, the Lord is my shepherd, the phrase the Lord is my shepherd, referred to God's covenant name as shepherd. Um, we talked about uh, how Jesus is the chief shepherd, amen? how he is our shepherd. And we talked about all the things that went into the role of a shepherd, that the shepherd was a protector. The shepherd was a guider. The shepherd was the one who led the sheep uh, where they need to go. And that, um, that, that psalm dealt with the trusting of the shepherd, that relationship between the sheep and the shepherd and how the sheep could depend and trust, on, and trust in the shepherd. And so we're going to read the entire 23rd Psalm again, and then we're going to focus in on verse number two. So Psalms 23, and let's look at verse number one. We're going to begin there. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup 
overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's zero in on verse number two. So we did again a detailed study on verse number one. And as we look at verse number two, uh, let's read verse number two. Verse number two says, he makes me lie down in what? Green pastures. He leads me beside what? Quiet waters. Now, again, this psalm deals with our relationship with the Lord, who he is to us and our ability to trust him as a shepherd. When David was writing this, God was communicating the type of relationship that we were to have with him. He wanted us to understand through what David was saying, our relationship with him as sheep and him as the shepherd. Now, let's take a look at it again. Again, verse number two, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Listen to this. The Israelites who read this psalm when David wrote it uh, <laughs> thousands of years ago, a thousand years before Christ, would have known from experience how hard it is to get a sheep to lie down. Wow. Think about that. The psalm starts off saying, he makes me what? Lie down. But they would have known because they were in that type of society where people herded sheep that it is difficult to get a sheep to do what? Lie down. Sheep are absolutely defenseless. Did you hear that? If a wolf or a lion comes in, they can't do anything but run. And even then, they can't run very fast. Their bodies are like watermelons with four toothpicks sticking out of the bottom. So they mostly waddle. That's why sheep, watch this now, that's why sheep stand up most of the time. They want to get as much of a head start as possible when danger comes. If a sheep is going to lie down, listen to this, he needs to feel absolutely secure. He also needs a full stomach or else he will constantly be on the move looking for food. Take those two things in for a moment. So the sheep, it was hard to get them to lie down because they understood that they were slow. <laughs> and if danger showed up, they wanted a head start. They wanted to be able to run away. So they were reluctant to lie down. So, that di so the, the, the psalm tells us, he makes me what? Lie down. So that deals with a level of trust, doesn't it? So if he's saying that, the, the, that you're being made to lie down, that means there must not be a fear of danger. Why? Because of the protection of the shepherd. So a, a sheep that trust would be willing to do what? Lie down. And a sheep that lies down is not looking for what? Food. So not only does it feel safe, it is also full. Did you catch that? He makes me lie down in what? Green pastures. In other words, I'm safe and full. I feel safe and my needs are met. So this psalm in the second verse deals with trust and safety. And it also deals with provision. It deals with us having the ability to place our trust, our safety, and our needs in the hand of the shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As David says, sometimes God really does make us lie down. Hallelujah. He makes us. 
<laughs> Glory to God. Listen to this. The shepherd purposely chooses green pasture where his sheep can gather to feed. A place where his sheep can lie down without any fear or disturbance. Think about what kind of care the shepherd must have for the sheep to choose that type of place for them. A place where they can lie down without any kind of fear, any kind of disturbance. A place necessary for the well-being of the sheep. Listen to this. Likewise, biblical green pastures represent the same thing to us that is spiritual food. Spiritual food. Now, that deals with, remember we said on last week that Jesus was the chief shepherd. And we said that pastors are the what? Under shepherds, right? So, Jesus leads us to what? Green pastures. Places where we can go and be fed spiritually. You should not be hungry if you have gone to a place that Jesus Christ has led you. Did you catch that? This is why I hate tradition and I hate religion. I, uh, yeah, I use that word hate. I hate it. Because there are people who die spiritually out of tradition. This was me, Ma's church. <laughs> Grandma. Raise me in this church. But are they being fed? And is that the place that Jesus has led them to? A lot of people will stay in a particular congregation out of tradition, not following the leading of the shepherd. And, and God, well, let me just show it to you. Go to Jeremiah 3. <laughs> so when we see that word green pastures, remember, it, it's, it's using the example of the sheep being fed, the sheep being full, the sheep being somewhere where there's green pastures, but it's all, it also has a spiritual meaning that if we will follow the chief shepherd, he's going to lead us to the place where we'll be fed spiritually. Amen. Amen. Let's look at an example here in Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3, and let's look at verse number 15. Jeremiah 3 and verse number 15 says this. Then I will give you what? Pastors. Pastors. NIV says shepherds. After what? My own heart. Who's giving the shepherds? God is. He said, I will do it. I will do it. Remember, he leads me. He leads me. He said, I will do it. Now, the problem comes in when we make our own decision. <laughs> but he says, I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Who will do what? Lead you with what? Knowledge and What does that mean? Gaining knowledge and understanding. That means you're being fed how? Spiritually. Does everybody see that? There's a difference between gaining knowledge and understanding and being entertained. Y'all quiet tonight. I said there's a difference between gaining knowledge and understanding and being entertained being entertained is like eating dessert but there's no substance there is no nutrition there's no growth and Jesus says I'm going to lead you into green pastures nourishment food you're going to be able to eat and grow and be nourished does everybody see that so the chief shepherd is concerned about you being fed spiritually like the natural shepherd was concerned about the sheep being fed naturally. Does everybody see that? The Amplified says, then in the final time, I will give you spiritual shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and the what? True understanding. Does everybody see that? So that's the shepherd's job. That's the, that's the, the under shepherd's job is to, is to feed the sheep spiritually. Now, go to, go to Acts 20. Let me show you this. Go to Acts 20. 
Acts 20. So when we see this, I want you to think about the role of Christ as the shepherd. What does he want for you? He wants you fed. He wants you what? Fed. fed. He wants you nourished. He wants you eating. Oh, glory to God. He doesn't want you walking it out. He wants you to eat this word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Acts 20, and let's look at verse number 28. Acts 20, verse number 28. Look at what it says here. Keep watch. Are you there? Keep watch over yourselves. Now, he's talking to shepherds. Now, we say pastors or shepherds are under shepherds. Who's the chief shepherd? Jesus. Jesus is the chief everything, isn't he? Huh? Yes. There are no chief shepherds, no chief apostles. Yeah, I said it. No right. chief prophets. That's right. Jesus is the chief. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you what? Oversee. Now he's saying to these pastors, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. You see that? So that means that the people they're overseeing have been brought and connected to them by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit established that relationship. The Holy Spirit made that connection. Now watch this. Be shepherds of, of the church of God. He's telling them be shepherds. Which he bought with his own blood. I know. Watch this. Again, think about that sheep shepherd relationship. I know that after I leave, salvage wolves will come in among you and will not do what? Spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and look what they arise to do. And do what? Distort the truth. In order to draw away disciples after them. Not after Christ, but after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Everybody see that? So he's talking here about the role of the shepherd as a protector. The shepherd is supposed to feed the sheep. And in David is declaring his trust in his shepherd that he will be led to green pastures. Hallelujah. He'll be fed. Amen. And he can lie down. <laughs> Look at what it says. Verse 2 again. Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside what? Quiet waters. Now, what is meant by he leads me beside quiet waters? We, we, we took a look at the green pastures. But what's meant by quiet waters? Listen to this. In the Hebrew language... The words for still waters, which it says in the, in, the, in, the, in the King James, the words in the Hebrew language, we know the, the Bible was originally Old Testament written in Hebrew. Everybody remember that? So we established that on, on the first uh, Wednesday in this month. But in the Hebrew language, the words there for still water means this. Listen to this. Restful waters or refreshment. Restful waters or what? Refreshment. Listen to this. Our shepherd wants to lead us to a place of rest. Write that down. Our shepherd wants to lead us to a place of rest. And not just rest, a place of rest, a place of trust, a place of confidence. A place where you rely on him and focus on him without anything that will distract you. Let me say that again. Our shepherd wants to lead us to a place of rest, a place of trust, a place of confidence, a place where you rely on him and focus on him without anything to distract you. That's what's meant by still waters, restful waters, or waters of refreshment. Again, a place of rest, a place of trust, a place of confidence, a place where you rely on him 
and focus on him without anything that will distract you. Now, do we have distractions in this life? Absolutely we do. Does God, does the Lord want those distractions to become so big that we stop focusing on him? No. Where does he want our focus? On him. Is it easy to get distracted? Absolutely it is. We can be distracted by the cares of life. We can be distracted by this happening over here, this happening over there. Anybody that knows me, you, you, you probably heard me say this. I don't care. If you really had a deep conversation with me and you brought up something I don't care about, you, I probably told you I don't care. You know why? I'm not going to be distracted. Hallelujah. I pray. I cast. I release. And after that, I don't care. Because what he tell me to do my my cares? Cast them on him. So if I cast them on him, why am I still caring? Don't confuse the kind of care I'm talking about. I care, care, but I don't care. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to spend a lot of time thinking about certain things. I'm just not. Because our time is limited. Hello? Our time is what? You better get that real quick. Because when you get that, you get all the junk out of your life. I don't have time to think about that. I don't have time to worry about that. I don't have time to listen to that. Amen. Amen. I don't care. Hallelujah. And so he wants us to be in this place of rest, this place of trust, this place of confidence where we rely on him. Our focus should be on him, not on everything else. Amen. Oh, my God. Election's coming up. I hope Biden doesn't get back in there. I hope Trump doesn't get back in there. You're distracted. Because Jesus is Lord. And he's on the throne. And he'll be on the throne after November. Don't be distracted. Amen. You ain't got time to be down somewhere marching with your signs and all that kind of stuff. That's not, that's not a good use of your kingdom purpose. Your time is more valuable. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to verse 3 now. Verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3 says this. Listen to this carefully. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He refreshes my what? Soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He refreshes my soul. He refreshes my soul. The Amplifier says, He refreshes and restores my soul life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He refreshes my soul. So the job of the shepherd, as I'm following him, my soul should be refreshed. I said, as I'm following him, what should happen? My soul should be refreshed. Now listen to this. The root of the Hebrew word for restore, listen to this, is to turn back. As in to recover, refresh, my God, relieve, render again, rescue, restore, fetch home again. God takes the essence of who you are as a person and he brings you back again to himself. He refreshes my soul. Hallelujah. So when you get to the point to where you have run out, you have burnt out, you are just, I'm just tired. He says, I will refresh your soul. What's your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. What's that got to do with being refreshed? Don't you know if you're not refreshed, you do some dumb stuff with the soul? Your mind can be weary. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. Your emotions can be out of whack. Yes. Hello. Yes. And your will. You make dumb choices when you're in that condition. Yes. Anybody, anybody yes. honest enough to admit? Yes. You make some dumb decisions when you should have just went to sleep. Yes. Hello. Hello. When you should have just prayed, gave to God, and went to bed. Yes. Instead, we made decisions yes. when our soul needed refreshing. Yeah. 
So he restores, refreshes our soul. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, one of God's covenant names is the Lord my restorer. Write that down. My God. You can call on that name. The Lord my restorer. Now, anything that God names himself, remember he said, whatever you need me to be, I am that. If that's his name, and if you need restore, and guess what he'll do? He'll restore you. You just got to let him do it. Hallelujah. Amen. How do I do that? I got to be like the sheep. I got to trust my shepherd. Hallelujah. I got to have confidence in the shepherd. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Jesus. That shepherd, the chief one. I got to have confidence in him. Amen. Amen. And then I got to let him restore me when I need to be restored. See, when you get to the end of yourself, normally that's when we realize, you know what? Maybe I need to give this to God. And, I, and one thing I have learned about God over the years, learned about the Lord is, as long as you think you got it, he will step back. He'll say, oh, you got it? Oh, you know what? Okay. Go for it. And then he'll stand off to the side until you get through. And then when you get through, he'll be right there waiting to restore your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. See, if we're weary and we're tired, we're not looking in the right place. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is our shepherd. <laughs> the Lord as our shepherd restores and refreshes our soul our life our emotions and our vitality all that comprises our inner living being glory to god the lord brings the restoration listen to this we all need and that only he can provide he brings a restoration that we all need and that only he can provide. Only the Lord can provide it. Write that down. Only the Lord can provide it. Only the Lord can provide it. Only the Lord can provide it. If your soul needs to be refreshed and restored, only the Lord can provide that refreshing. Nothing else can provide that refreshing. And people turn to everything most of the time before turning to him. And we should go to him first. That's why the alcoholic will only become a worse alcoholic. Because the refreshing won't come from alcohol. The pot smoker will only smoke more pot because the refreshing will not come from that. It doesn't matter how deep you go in that. You ever hear somebody huh, back in the day? Huh? Oh, I had a rough week. I'm going to the bar. Oh, I have a rough week. I'm going to give me a couple of beers, a couple of six packs. Hello? Oh, I'm stressed. I need to smoke a little bit. Is that going to last? Does it work? Absolutely not. And that's why it leads to addiction. And that's why the addiction gets deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger because they keep going to a dry well. If somebody needs restoring, Christ is that restorer. People are not your restorer. Things are not your restorer. Amen. If your soul needs something, Christ is everything you need. He has everything you need. Glory to God. Amen. We ought to know that on the front end. Don't find it out later. Amen. Glory to God. You all heard the story I told about when I was younger in church. You all remember me saying this? How I looked around. Don't nobody get offended. I got some grades coming in. You know. <laughs> but I was, you know, I remember sitting there looking around. I said, man, everybody in here got white hair, gray hair. <laughs> I'm just saying, mind of a child. I'm like, why is everybody in here so old? You know what the Lord told me? I ain't got much coming in. Don't be looking up here. <laughs> <laughs> the 
You know what the Lord told me? He said, because they spent a majority of their life looking for me everywhere except the right place. They refused to turn to me. They tried this and they tried that. It was only toward the end of their life that they realized that I was what they needed. I think it is an insult to our creator to waste our most productive years looking in the wrong direction. We should serve God with our youth and our strength and our vitality. We should give it all to him now. Hallelujah. Because there's going to come a day where you can't do the things that you do right now. Be able to look back and say, I gave my best years, not to the club, not to this, not to that, but to the kingdom. And we waste time not realizing that he is the restorer of our souls. Hallelujah. I'm the kind of person I, I like for people to, I like to learn when people tell me things. I don't like the hard way. I don't understand people who like that, who got to find out the hard way. Oh, well, let me just see. Well, you go right ahead. I'm going to listen. I'm, 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 oh, you bump, Oh, you got that knot? Okay, I don't want a knot. I'm not going to do that. I don't like knots. Your knot taught me not to do that. I don't need my own. I don't need a revelation. I got one when I looked at you. That's all I need. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But when we need him, he's there. He's a restorer. That's what he's there for. Hallelujah. Amen. We shouldn't be tired. <laughs> Our soul shouldn't be tired. If your soul is tired, your focus is in the wrong place. If your soul is tired, you're not going to him. You should not be tired. And it, watch this now, and I'm about to help you. And it's not emotional, it's a decision. You choose the kind of life you're going to have. Amen. Amen. You don't have to think about that. No. <laughs> I'm trying, somebody getting delivered in here tonight. You don't have to think about it. Write that down. I don't have to think about it. Whatever your it is, I don't have to think about it. <laughs> Write it down. You don't have to. You choose to. I just can't stop your line. You're choosing to think about it. You choose to think about it every time you choose not to focus on him. There is another option. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Again, the Lord brings the restoration we all need. And that only he can provide. Hallelujah. The focus is on God's work in our lives. Listen to this. We cannot restore ourselves. We what? The scripture said he refreshes. Not I refresh my soul. He refresh. Who's doing the refreshing? God is doing the refreshing. Hallelujah. But we got to let him do it, don't we? I said we have to let him do it, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3 again. He refreshes my soul. Now listen to this. He guides me along the what? Right paths for what? His namesake. Oh, what's that mean? Let's look at this. Listen to this. This guidance of the Lord is always onto paths of righteousness. Always paths of what? Righteousness. This represents practical righteousness or personal holiness. David knows that the Lord will never lead him into sin. Instead, he will be directed away from iniquity. You see it? It's an assurance that he would always lead his people in the path in which they should go. The right path. The what? The right path. 
Somebody say God led them into sin is a liar from the pit of hell. Huh? Lord, I just don't know why you keep. No. That's a lie. See, the Lord is always there talking to us. Some people call it unspiritual. Well, not unspiritual. People that are ignorant of spiritual things call it a conscience. We know it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not condemn. What does he do? He convicts. You're paying attention. Praise God. He doesn't condemn. He convicts. He says, you did that, but don't do that again. And he does everything he can before we do it so that we don't do it. Why are y'all so quiet? Amen. 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 Yeah, he, he, does, he does that. So he's leading us into the what? Right path to do the what? Right thing. Who's leading us there? God is. Are you leading yourself? Absolutely not. No, that's not you, baby. Jesus said there's none good but the Father. I know you want to pat yourself on the back and bake yourself a cookie, but no, you didn't do that. It's not your choice. It's him who says do this instead of that. Hallelujah. Amen. People get quiet right here on stuff like this. Because some people just, it, it just, you know, some people still stuck on this statement. I'm a good person. And every time you say that, you deny the need for Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus told that young ruler, there's none. Good. He said, why do you call me good? There's none good but the Father. Just go ahead and admit that. And you will be all right. If you don't, you're in danger of pride. And when you're in danger of pride, you're in danger of a fall. See, it's all the people who fail who said, I'm good. It'll never get me. It'll never be me. I can go over there. Nothing to happen. See how quiet y'all get? I'll never do that. I would never, ever do that. I'm such a good person. I'm super Christian. Don't you know who I am? I'm the super saint. You are not apart from the leading of the Holy Spirit. Accept that. And depend on him like you were designed to do. Recognize your need for him like you were designed to do. It's okay. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Just the other day I said something I shouldn't have said. Why are you looking at me like that? Like you ain't said nothing. You said something today probably. Just the other day. Huh? And the restrainer was talking to me. Don't say it. And it flew out anyway. I heard him. I acknowledged him. But it was too late. It was too late. It's too late. It wasn't nothing terrible. I'd call somebody an idiot, you know. But it wasn't, you know. That wasn't nice. That's not love. That wasn't one of the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. I was getting my head. <laughs> Yeah, I was getting my hair cut, and I was talking to uh, my barber about a situation. I said, yeah, I'm that idiot. I was talking about a past client of mine, and the whole spirit, it was about to come off my lips. The whole spirit said, don't do that. You have a witness. Huh? But it slipped. No, it didn't slip. I let it out. <laughs> but I repented for it. I repented for it. And guess what he said? He's like, well, I see it. You don't need to repent. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but we're human. We're human. And you need to acknowledge your need for Jesus if you're going to walk the right path. Amen. Let's look at an example of it. Let's look at it. Well, first of all, listen to, listen to what it says. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right what? Paths. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Now go to Psalms 37. Let's take a look at this. Psalms 37. Psalms 37 and verse number 23. Psalms 37 and verse number 23. When you're there, say, I am there. All right. Where are the rest of you? Psalms 37, 23. We're there? All right. 
Look at what it says, verse 23. It says, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who what? The lights in him, though he may what? Stumble. He will what? Not fall. For the Lord what? Upholds him with his hand. The King James says, listen to this. The steps of a good man. The good man is translated righteous there. The Bible's not contradicting itself. The steps of a good man are ordered by who? And he delighteth in his way. See, the steps, see, see, everything right I do, the Lord is ordering that. Every time I make the right decision, the Lord is ordering that. Every time I choose righteousness over something else, the Lord is, he's ordering that. Listen to it in the Amplified. The steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord, and he delights in his way and blesses his path. Glory to God. Everybody see that? So listen to this. It seems, watch this. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake, the way of righteousness meaning righteous behavior glorifies God when people see it for his namesakes. That's what that means. He guides me in the right path for his namesake. In other words, when I, when I do the right thing, it glorifies God when people see it. Wow, that's good. That's good. Hello? And that's why anything you do that's quote unquote good, who should get the glory? To God be the glory. Not to me be the glory or you be the glory. Hello? Hello? Amen. Not to Rosemary be the glory. Not to Tamika be the glory. Not to Davia be the glory. To God be the glory. I'll just call your name. Don't look at me like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> to God be the glory. We're supposed to give him glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this. Thank you, Lord. I think we're going to be able to get through this. So he guides us along the right path. Now, what does that along the right path mean? It means the path he wants us to travel, the way he wants us to live. And when people see it, he does it for his namesake. Hallelujah. That's why we have to be careful as believers what we do, what we say, what we put on social media. Yep, that last part right there you have to watch that amen especially if you posting your church this and your church that and then you posting this over here and that over there glory to God amen shouting on Monday twerking on Tuesday no that is not a good witness not a good witness hallelujah Amen. Amen. Lifted hands on Wednesday. <laughs> huh? E and J on Thursday. No. No, people. No. Uh uh. Amen. For his, we all think about his namesake. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's why I don't send people friend requests. Oh, <laughs> y'all. You send me one, I'll, 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 I'll accept it. I'm not going to send you one because I don't know where you're at. And I don't want to, I want to see everybody through the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at verse number four. Verse number four. Now, this verse is, oh, my God. Listen to this. Verse number four says, even though I walk through the what? Darkest valley, I will what? Fear no evil. For you are what? With me. Your rod and your staff, what do they do? They comfort me. So he says, I'm going through the, uh, uh, even though I go through a dark valley, I fear no what evil. What is a dark valley? That means that there's things lurking around. That doesn't mean you're going through the rough side of the, the rough side of the mountain. It's not what it's talking about. It's talking about there being the presence of things around that could influence, that could devour, that could attack, that could destroy. But there's no fear 
Why? Because you are with me. Those things also include things that might we might get ourselves into. Amen. But there's no reason to fear if he's with you. And then he says, your rod and your staff, they do what? Listen to the Amplified. The Amplified says, even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your, listen to this carefully now. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. Hallelujah. So there's two things that I want you to see. I want you to see there are two tools that most shepherds use. They use a shepherd's rod and they use a shepherd's staff. A lot of times the staff would have a hook on the end of it. And the rod was normally a short club-like um, rod, like a short baseball bat almost. And those were used to protect the sheep. The shepherd would use both to hit any predators coming toward the sheep, but he would also use them in guiding the sheep and protecting the sheep by not allowing the sheep to wander off. So those were the shepherd's tools. Now let's take a look at this. So he says again, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil for you are with me. And look what they said, your rod and your staff, they do what? I get comfort in knowing that these tools are in the hand of my shepherd. Isn't that something? He's saying I'm comforted by those tools being in the hand of my shepherd. Now, now listen to this. Jesus as the good shepherd, listen to this, will prod. Remember Jesus taught in what? Starts with a P? Parables. In other words, he used natural things to bring understanding of spiritual things. He used examples, all right? And so this example of shepherd and sheep is, sheep is throughout the entire Bible. So it's throughout the entire Bible because that society and that culture understood what shepherds did and how they did it. Now, when he says your rod and your staff, they comfort me, it's because they had an understanding of the different ways that the rod and the staff were used. Jesus, as the good shepherd, will prod his wandering sheep back to the fold. What does it mean to prod? Tap. Tap. Remember, the shepherd would walk, the sheep would be in a line, right? One might get over here. Oh, that grass looks good over there. So what would the shepherd walk over and do with his rod? The rest of the sheep are going that way. He'd tell that, he'd do this. And that sheep would turn, okay, maybe that's not that interesting. Get back in line. Does everybody see that? That's what the rod was for. That's what the rod was for. So he will prod his wandering sheep back into the fold to keep them in his what? Protective care. So he can see them. Stay in this area. Watch this now. Remember the sheep were moving. Stay on this what? path don't go over there I can't protect you over there stay on the path keep going this way this is the way you see it he will use a rod and a stiff st and a staff to direct them to ever abide with him and to walk in the right direction on the right path. Hallelujah. In biblical times, a shepherd consistently used both a rod and a staff to tend the flock. Both were used to protect the sheep, each in, each in a very specific way. Listen to this. The rod was used to fight off wild animals and to count the sheep and direct them. So the rod, if a wild animal was coming, he wouldn't prod them the way he would the sheep. He'd beat the wild animal with it. So as a sheep, I am comforted knowing that if I get off track 
Or if I'm in a danger zone, he's going to prod me. But if a predator shows up, he'll beat them. with. So thank God I'm confident that my shepherd has a rod. The rod <laughs> prodded them during the day in the fields and at night into the sheepfold. He used it to keep them in the fold. Wow. Listen to this. You ready? A willing sheep would respond to the prodding. Who's that? It's that Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 don't do that. Don't say that. Don't go over there. A willing. Watch it. But a stubborn, strong-willed sheep would not. So what would he use for the stubborn sheep? The willing sheep just needed a little tap. Get back over there. The stubborn sheep, he take the staff with the hook and say, get over here. The hook will go around the neck and they be push moved by force. You see it? But David explaining the relationship we should have with the chief shepherd is saying, I'm comforted by both. That you will prod me, but you'll also yank me if you have to. Oh, hallelujah. Write this down. It's good to be yanked. <laughs> Write it down. It's good to be yanked. Hallelujah. Yeah, write that. When we yanked, when the prodding didn't work. He said, oh, I oh that okay, let me switch tools. I tried to tap you, but okay, I need this now. Get over there. When are we being yanked? When doors closed that we thought was supposed to be open. When he was telling us the whole time, don't go that way. Lord, I just don't know why that happened. I thought you were going to bless me, and they just, I'm so disappointed. No, that was just a hook. Keeping you from doing something stupid. That should comfort you. That shouldn't make you upset. Amen. That he kept you from going down the wrong path. He kept you from going off track. Hallelujah. Amen. I know what you thought, but forget what you thought. That wasn't a way. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, can we look at another example? Huh? We said the rod was used to prod, right? That was for the willing. Staff for the stubborn. Go to Proverbs 13. This is going to make more sense to you now. Go to Proverbs 13. This is going to make so much more sense to you. How many of you getting something out of this? Okay, about four folks, okay. <laughs> Proverbs 13. When you're there, say, I am there. Okay, three people there, four people there. Same four people that's getting something there. Are we there? All right, NIV. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Look what it says. Proverbs 13, verse 24. Look what it says. Whoever spares the rod. Did you catch that? You see it? Whoever spares the rod. Does what? Hates their children. You see it? Why? Because they can get on the wrong path. They can get out of the sheep fold. And what's waiting for them? The wolf. The bear. The lion. Whoever spares the rod spoils the child. But whoever what? Loves their child is careful to what? Look up here. Look up here. Discipline. Get back on track. You see it? Amen. Listen to the Amplified. I love this. 
Whoever withholds the rod of discipline. Amen. Amen. Whoever withholds the rod of what? Hates his son. But whoever loves him disciplines and trains him how? Diligently and what? Appropriately with wisdom and love. Amen. Amen. You want to show that you hate a child? Let them do whatever they want to do. Amen. Because what you won't teach them, life will. My, my, I want it now. Okay. Try that in the world. Amen. That's the problem we have now. So many people don't even know how to act when they get pulled over. Yeah. Why you stop me? I want, man, I want speed. No discipline. Sir, can I see your ID? Uh, why? Why? For what? Right. No discipline. Man, we want to go march. Right. You all be marching against their parents. Right. Because they created that monster. The hook was used to defend the sheep, but it was also used to direct the sheep by force. Hallelujah. Question. Don't say anything. Just think about it. Does the Lord need to use his rod to direct you with gentle prodding? Do you respond? Or does he need to use his staff to firmly move you against your will? Do you surrender to his leading? Or do you stubbornly and willfully follow your own desires? Whichever one is needed, we must always remember in whose hand the rod and staff are held. They are held in the hand of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he uses both according to his good will to keep us ever close and guide us on the path to our eternal sheepfold. For that, we should be eternally grateful. So his rod and his staff, they do what? Comfort me. Who wouldn't be comforted by knowing if I get crazy? We should, that should be a comfort, shouldn't it? Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. How, you, know, you know the scariest scripture in the Bible to me? The scariest scripture in the Bible is when the Bible says he gave them over. Yes, yeah. yes, That's scary. Yes, yeah. Y'all have read that? You ever heard that one? Yeah, yeah gave them over to a rep. That, what? You've been crazy and acting crazy and being rebellious so long, he just said, okay. Yeah. That's scary right there. Yes, it is. But his rod and his staff, yeah. that should comfort us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Conviction should comfort us. Yes. The leading of the Holy Spirit should comfort because that means he's loving on me. Yes. Glory to God. Love on me, Lord. Love on me all you want. Don't ever let me get crazy. Love on me. Amen. 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 Love on me to prod me. Love on me to hook my neck. Whatever you just love me. I, my neck will get better. I'll rub it. Just hook me up. Hook me. Hook me. Hook me up. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's read it again. <laughs> Verses 2 through 4. He makes me lie down in what? Green pastures. How I many of you have a better understanding of that? All right. He leads me beside what? How many of you have a better understanding of that? Verse 3. He refreshes my? How many of you have a better understanding of that? He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. How many of you have a better understanding of that? Verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are what? Your rod and your staff, what are they supposed to do? How many of you have a better understanding of that? 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you get anything? Did you get anything out of this tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, the, so Psalms 23 is about our relationship as sheep with Christ, his role as a shepherd, our role as sheep, and all that that involves. Amen. And it is is deeper than just quoting it. I said it's deeper than that. It 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 is at its essence, it is the heart of the relationship. Who we are, who he is, our role, his role, what we're supposed to do, what he's gonna do. Amen. And we need to be mindful of it because we don't want to step <laughs> write this down. Write this down. I want you to remember this. Write down, write, I am a fat sheep. Yep, just like that. You ain't sheep. You're not fat. You know what I'm saying? It's an example. I am a fat sheep with little legs. Write that down. Write that down. Hello. You don't want to be lamb chop. <laughs> Rack of lamb. You need your shepherd. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. Everybody got it? Amen. You're Jesus' sheep, not Mary's. <laughs> You'll get that tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this night. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We thank you for a deeper understanding of Psalms 23. Continue, Father, to give us revelation and understanding. And I thank you so much, Father, for being our shepherd. Thank you so much for leading us and guiding us. And uh, Father, we just pray that we'll be the best sheep to you. That you won't have to prod us, you won't have to hook us, you won't have to go looking for us. We'll be right there in the fold, hearing your voice, acknowledging and obeying your voice. And we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, well, we're all family tonight, and so if you're giving, just go ahead and prepare whatever the Lord has laid on your heart to give. Those of you that are watching online... You have the ability to give at home as well. Just take a look at the information on your screen. Um, you can text to give. Uh, I think after we're dismissed, you can call and give over the phone if you like. Uh, but that information is on your screen. Amen. So next week, we're going to be looking at the last two verses. Last two verses, and that will end this series. Um, verse 5 and verse number 6. Verse 5 and verse 6. Hallelujah. How many of you knew Psalms 23 only had six verses? Isn't that, isn't that something? Something to be so powerful, just six verses. It's amazing. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Once you have whatever the Lord is leading your heart to give, prepare, just stand with it. We're going to bless it. And, uh, and then don't go anywhere because you know, I want to know what you got. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Write this down. I heard the Lord say this. I heard the Lord say, increase your prayer time. Did you hear that? Increase your prayer time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't be one of those people. I pray all the time. He said, increase it. So if you pray 24 hours a day, make, move it up to 25. <laughs> Nobody asked you where you at. He said, "Increase it." 
<laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Are we ready? All right, lift it up toward heaven. Father, we thank you so much for every tithe and every offering that is being sown into the kingdom work here at New Creation. We ask that you would bless it and multiply it and increase it, Father. We trust you with it, and we thank you right now that as we honor you with our wealth, with our substance, Father, you will release a harvest because you said you would. And so we thank you, Father, that this seed shall produce in our lives, these tithes shall produce in our lives a mighty harvest. We thank you that lack does not exist in our finances. We thank you that we walk in abundance, that we're just like that sheep. You're leading us in the green pastures, even as we obey you in this. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Just come from all over. The Lord has led you to give today. I'll receive it. Bless you. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Well, Father, we thank you so much for these tithes and offerings that have been sown into the kingdom. Bless them, multiply them, and increase them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, some, some of y'all still coming, huh? Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, go ahead. Is everybody giving that wanted to give? Okay. All right. What do we got? What did you get tonight? Come on. Let's go. Everything right that you do, God is ordering it. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. The Holy Spirit doesn't condemn, but convicts. He does not condemn, but he convicts. If you're feeling condemned, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's the enemy. That's the accuser. Yes, ma'am. It's good to be yanked. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When you do the right thing, it glorifies God. Yes, sir. It's not your conscience, it's the Holy Spirit. Don't let these people, you, well, don't you use all these dumb terms. Conscience, the universe. I feel like the universe. God made the universe. I was saying stupid stuff. Yes. Acknowledge your need for Jesus. Yes, ma'am. We cannot restore ourselves. You cannot restore yourself. You can, man, can I tell y'all something? I spent so much money trying to restore myself one time. Can I tell you how? I was like, oh, my shoulders just tight and just tense. And I went to schedule me a massage. And then next week it was like, oh. I mean, I got off the table and still felt like I needed 25 more. <laughs> so I scheduled another one. And he's not cheap now. I went in. And I went and got another one. And finally, we're like, maybe you need to pray. <laughs> maybe there's some stuff you need to release to God. And you know, I did that, and, uh, and hey, you know, she wasn't too happy. She, was, she made some money that month until I, I figured it out. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Pray, cast, and release it. That's it. That's it. Is that what you had to? Okay. A willing sheep will respond to the Holy Spirit. Yes. There's a difference between knowledge and understanding and being what? Entertained. The church has lost its, well, some people have lost their mind. There's some foolishness. Yes, ma'am. If your soul is tired, you're focusing on the wrong thing, you don't have to think about it. Yes. There's none good but the Father. Go ahead and get that now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the rod is to protect me, the staff, that comfort and console. 
The rod is to protect, the staff, comfort, and console. Yes. Don't waste your most productive years looking in the wrong direction. God don't want your leftovers. Lord, I'm ready to serve you. I mean, you're 192 years old. What you want me to do, Lord? They don't want that. No. Yes. Learn when people tell you, don't find out the hard way. I don't get, I don't, uh, I don't like pain. Yes. Uh, cast your cares on God. Cast your cares on God. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, when you open up the Bible study, um, and you were saying about how you should listen, how you should Amen. Amen. That, and that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people, fall, a lot of people traditionally fall in line. See, our relationship with God is supposed to be personal, and where where He wants us to be and where He wants us to grow, that's a personal thing. And a lot of people operate in tradition, and and you 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 just can't do that. You gotta. We all have a destiny. We all have, a, and, and for some people, their families are idols. And we're supposed to love our family, but your family's not supposed to be an idol for you to just do what they want you to do and follow what they want you to do. No, that's not, that's not of God. Yes? Depend on God like you were designed to do. Depend on God like what? You were like you were designed to do. How do we know we're designed to depend on God? When we need 25 massages. <laughs> or stuff is going on and we have not given to him. Yes, sir. He leads you what? Away from sin and what? Not into it. Don't fall for that dumb stuff. You ever hear somebody say something like this? Well, if he didn't want me to do it. Oh, he say, oh they say stuff like this. Lord, if, if you don't want me to do this, do X, Y, Z. <laughs> Take it away, Lord. Let the bar be closed when I drive up. Let them close early. If it's not your will, <laughs> that's not how it works. Yes, sir. <laughs> what you won't teach your children, life will. A man, a man, a man. I know that's your baby, your boo, but the world does not revolve around them. And they need to know that now. They have a part to play in it. They are not it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who else? Yes, ma'am. What's that? You're a fat sheet with little legs. <laughs> That's right. Don't be dinner. Don't be dinner. Don't be chops and don't be racks. Don't get hungry. I keep talking about that. Is that it? Praise God. All right. Well, let's let's stand. Glory to God. And Father, thank you for this seed that has been sown into my life. Bless it, multiply it, and increase it. I thank you that it will open doors, multiple, multiple, multiple doors. And it is done. It is so, and it will manifest quickly. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, thank you for this night. Bless us as we leave this place. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. And you get all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you all soon.